Hi, it's Connie Erickson with another Fairly Live at Five. And um, I was listening to relationship expert John Gottman speak the other day, and he said something that really struck me. I'm always listening to podcasts and um, conferences. So anyway, he said something that really struck me, and he said, negative comparisons begin the cascade toward betrayal. Negative comparisons begin the cascade towards betrayal. <sighs> My mind was blown. That concept just really struck me. I had to stop the recording and listen several times and several times again as I wrote this. So, okay, let me explain. This is based on the work of social psychologist Carol Rusbolt. Um, and you could look that up if you're more interested. But this goes... Gottman goes on to define betrayal as the culture of substituting what is missing by looking outside the relationship. And it just really struck me. So let me break down my thoughts. The first seems kind of obvious. Don't compare your partner to other people. And I think that's what he was actually talking about when he was um, giving this conference. And um, I thought about the couples I see, and when you think betrayal, most of us think about infidelity, the big betrayal. And unless it's a one-night stand, I don't think I've ever seen an affair that didn't start out without comparisons. Um, I hear things like, he listens to me, she doesn't judge me, she makes me feel exciting and interesting. I've heard all those things about the affair person. And all of those statements imply that the current partner is lacking in those things. That's, that seems obvious to me, but I've been doing this for a long time and I don't know what regular people know, so let me explain. Don't compare your partner to other people because that's an impossible comparison to live up to. If you've never lived with the person, you've never seen them sniff their socks to see them if they, see if they can wear them another day. You've never seen them eat in front of the refrigerator, yell at their kids, or make the same joke a hundred times. They are, at this point, perfect. And your partner can never and should never have to be compared. Uh, the other things I thought about was the second thing is don't compare your life to the way things should be. And I'm not sure that uh, Gottman thought about that. It's an extrapolation on my part. But I thought about other betrayals as well. Not the, the big one, not infidelity, but other more subtle ones. I frequently work with clients to recognize their self-sabotaging thoughts, and that's one part of my course as well. We all do it, but I notice addicts in particular have a way of frequently comparing what is to what should be. One partner I'm working with has been sober several years, but his thought process really hasn't caught up with his sobriety. So he has thoughts like, I work hard, things should be easier when I get home. And other clients I've worked with have thoughts like, he should respect me or he or she should support my dream more. If you're doing that, just stop. Stop right now. <laughs> because these two are comparison thoughts. But instead of comparing your partner to someone else, you're comparing your life or your relationship to the way things should be. Lenny Bruce once said, what should be never did exist, but people keep trying to live up to it. There is no what should be. There only is what is. So comparing partners to other people, if comparing partners to other people leads to affairs, then comparing the way your life is with the way things should be leads to betrayals fueled by other things like substances, or addictions. They can be obvious, like daily drinking, or they can be much more subtle, like too much time on your phone, or at work, or on video games. But let's be clear, they're betrayals in their own rights. You are still, as Gottman puts it, substituting what is missing by looking outside of the relationship. You are betraying your life with your partner by attempting to escape it on a daily basis. Uh, so that's the second thing. The third thing I thought was not to compare yourself to others. Um, this one's even more subtle, but when you compare yourself to others, you betray your relationship to yourself. And you need your relationship your, 
with yourself to be really good if you want any other relationship to be really good. If this is a new concept to you, let me explain. You definitely have a relationship with yourself, and it's important. You talk to yourself all day, you treat yourself kindly or unkindly, with respect or disrespect. So stop comparing yourself to others because when you compare yourself, you're probably only comparing yourself against people who are really good in that particular um, area. Like she's thinner, he's richer, she's more organized. You're rarely comparing yourself to people that are worse off than you are. And you don't know those people. They may be excelling in some categories, but you don't live in their heads. You don't see the categories that aren't going well, the ones that haunt them. So stop comparing yourself to others because you're betraying yourself and you need you. So uh, here's the take home message. Stop comparing. Don't compare your partner to others because it could lead to an affair. Don't compare your life to the way it should be because it can lead to escapism and addictions and will definitely lead to unhappiness. And don't compare yourself to others because that leads towards self-betrayal self and depression. So drop your comments. I would love to hear how you see that this is true or not true and how you're going to stop comparing yourself and your partner and your life. All right. Thanks a lot. I will see you next week for another Fairly Live.